How are you? Oh good. Yeah. Welcome to our new location. It's uh, a lot more space for us and yep, we do need everyone to update their information because we updated our system and we have some really cool new online features, so I'm glad you're here to take care of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can go ahead and do it right now and get you uh, get you all set up, get you an updated card, and you can go ahead and start checking out books today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just give me one second. email address okay. your regular address okay it's still the same preferred uh, branch for pickups okay yeah um, basically any branch in the surrounding counties uh, there's a list on the back of this paper that I'll give you on our new online system if you log in and set up your account you can look and see if there, if there's a book you're looking for, you can look and see if it's in any of those libraries. And if you want to put it on hold, you can choose which location. So say it's um, in a different branch, 30 minutes away, but you want to pick it up here when you go online and have this set as your default home. Um, when you put the book on hold, it automatically comes here. And then we would contact your email and let you know. And you do have the option to change that whenever you put a book on hold. Um, it won't prompt you for the information. You would have to consciously be aware that it needed changed. Like if you knew you were going to be in that area or that side of town or whatnot. Does that make sense? Okay, so you do want this to be your default. Okay, north side. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have you don't have any books checked out right now? Okay. Alright, I'm going to um, log you into our new system. And if you could do you have your old library card? That's okay, you can just um keep it but it won't access access um your account after today. You'll get a new card with a new account number and everything. Okay, so just give me one minute. And let me get you set up. It still has your name in the system and your address, but um, when we converted all of our um, all of our patrons over to the new system, that was all that came with it, which is why I was able to uh, 
um, contact you by email to let you know that you needed to update your information. It's kind of been a bit of a hassle, but well worth it for those people that do utilize the library often. This website and when you go to that website it's going to prompt you um, at the first page is like to search for books but in the top right corner there's a tab that says my account you just click on it and it asks for your last name and your account number which is right here and you can access when your books are due you can access which books you have on hold and renew books that way as well. So, let me get this. Okay, so, let me give you this piece of paper. This is for you to hold on to. And it's got a list of the different branches and directions for um, managing your new online account. I can definitely help you. Um, no problem. If you want to just... You have a list? Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can look them up and I can print out their call numbers and go get them for you if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's no problem at all. Okay, so let's see. First book. Ivanovich. I love her books. <laughs> number, I see you're on number seven. I think there's like 20 of them. No, I, I'm like, I'm on one of the in-between books, uh, Plum Spooky. It's like between, I think, 14 and 15. The sun also rises. So good. Frankenstein. Ooh, a good time of year to read some gothic novels with Halloween coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's available. Have you read Dracula? Yeah, I can add that to your list, absolutely. Dracula by Bram Stoker. Actually, um, past due, which means that if it's not returned soon, we will be billing the person. It looks like there's one other available in Central. I can have it sent here, but it'd probably take a few days. Would you like to put it on hold? going to print your call numbers out and if you want to come with me we can go and grab the books and I'll be right back.
as requested um, as part of our new system we offer everyone who comes in and updates their information basically like a new um, new patron session that I will go through and discuss the books with you mm -hmm. and we do have a book club it's on that sheet that I gave you and you can actually earn points for the books that you read and uh, there's like a different required book every month you need to discuss it and then you can earn um, like free movie passes, free pizza, things like that so yeah, absolutely just that second oh, I thought I had my phone flashing and looked like I had a phone call oh, I have someone on hold just a second. Hi Northside Library, this is Christina. How may I help you? Oh, I'm there. Sorry. Okay, so the first book I have here is Mary Shelley Frankenstein, um, the 1818 text version. This is a gothic beautiful story about science gone wrong and a lot of people don't know but Frankenstein is not the name of the monster. Frankenstein is the name of Doctor. Frankenstein confronts some of the most feared innovations of evolutionism. Topics such as degeneracy, hereditary disease, and mankind's status as a species of animal. The text used here is from the 1818 edition, which is a mocking expose of leaders and achievers who leave desolation in their wake, showing humanity its choice to live cooperatively or to die of selfishness. It is also a black comedy and harder and wittier than the 1831 version with which we are more familiar. So, that work? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and check it out. And you said you had a bag that has been... You said you had a bag that, um... known figure of seductive evil in Western literature. Bloodthirsty Count Dracula has inspired countless movies, books, and plays. But few, if any, have been fully faithful to Bram Stoker's original best-selling novel of mystery and horror, love and death, sin and redemption. So, it's actually written in the form of letters and diary entries takes place in uh, Transylvania and it's really a gothic novel and perfect for this time of year when it starts to get cold outside and you want to feel nice and cozy while you read something scary. So, uh, it's actually a little bit tragic too, um, both Frankenstein and Dracula, but I really like both of them. Oh, let me type that in for you. Okay. And something switching gears. The Happiness Project, or why I spent a year trying to sing in the morning, clean my closets, fight right, 
read Aristotle, and generally have more fun. And there's a guide to start your own happiness project. So this basically, uh, the author was depressed, and one day she just decided, uh, I'm not focusing on things that really matter, and I would like to add some substance to my life, and I'm going to go through the list of advice that everyone always gives and actually try them and she wrote down. Uh, so it's very personal and uh, endearing and pretty good. Um, a little cliche and predictable at, at times but um, it never hurts to remind yourself of the different things you can do to add happiness. So, I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Okay. Secrets of the Savannah. I really loved this. It, it is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, these two people were married and they spent 23 years in the African wilderness working with poachers and trying to restore the um, population of the African elephant and they like hired poachers to help keep track of the elephants and paid them and brought education and supplies and food and sanitation. Well, I mean they um, brought things to villages that the villagers deemed important and in exchange the villagers helped them in the crusade against poaching and a lot of times the poachers uh, never really went back to poaching which is tragic but it's what they knew and it was a quick buck and a lot of times it was the government that was paying them to do the poaching and they were only getting a small fraction but you know they put the money went a long way for them so um, it was a frustrating challenging account of all that and very uh, eye-opening to both sides kind of not that I condone in any way what um, animals being poached uh, but it helps you to understand it to some degree And this is actually a discussion book, which means that um, it's one of the books chosen for the book club. So uh, it's marked. We mark the discussion books for like the next six months, so I'm not sure which month it's for, but you can look online and find out. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. November, November, so you will be ahead of the game, and you can only, you know, check these out for three weeks, and you can renew them if you need to, but if someone puts a hold on a book, you will have to, uh, you will not be allowed to renew it, and I know you said you were having surgery, and you're going to be out for a couple weeks, uh, do you have someone who will be able to bring them back to return them if necessary, or... Yeah, typically, we don't, uh, typically if you let us know in advance and it's something extreme like that, the library is usually willing to work with you as far as late fees and things go, but, uh, we'll just take it a day at a time and see how it goes. If anybody requests any of these books, put some on hold. Okay. Dreaming in French. McAndrews. A precocious American girl growing up in Paris in the late 1970s leads a charmed life, but her idyllic childhood is turned upside down when her mother has an affair and the family is shattered. Leaving her sister in Paris, Charlotte follows Astrid to New York. Basically a coming of age story kind of, but the little girl grows up and she spends a lot of time in France and a lot of time in New York and um, she talks about the things she misses and 
the differences and her challenges and love. It's pretty, it's a pretty story. Confronting Collapse, the book that inspired the movie Collapse, Rupert, Michael C. Rupert, The Crisis of Energy and Money in a Post-Peak Oil World. So, de uh, in Confronting Collapse, Michael C. Rupert details the intricate connections between money and energy, including the ways in which oil shortages and price spikes triggered the economic crash that began in September 2008. Given oil's strange stranglehold on our economy and the reality of insufficient supplies, Rupert agrees that we are not in fact on the verge of economic recovery, but on the verge of complete collapse. The truth is not merely inconvenient, it is utterly devastating. But there is still hope. Reber outlines a plan of action that can break the U.S. and global economic addiction to oil and time to avoid social catastrophe. But only if we can overcome political inertia and the entrenched power of the energy interests. You are e yeah. No, I haven't seen it. Mm -mm. I actually have not read this one. Nope. It is on my list. <laughs> okay. You're gonna read it first? Yes, yeah, that's usually what I do. Uh, three cups of tea. This is kind of similar to the Savannah one, the sky, uh, goes to Pakistan in Afghanistan and tries to set up uh, schools for people in really remote areas. There's like uh, photos and this is his challenge in doing so um, because well he was uh, like a K2 senator or um, Mount Everest like he was into hiking up the Himalayas and basically failed but met some great people along the way and that is how he decided I don't think his writing talent is all that outstanding or anything, but um, the story itself is very moving, so it's worth reading, yeah, for sure. to explosive acclaim, The Sun Also Rises stands as perhaps the most impressive first novel ever written by an American writer. They in a clip about a group of American and English expatriates on an excursion from Paris's left bank to Glaucoma for the July fiesta and its climactic bullfight, a journey from the center of a civilization spiritually bankrupted by the First World War to a vital God-haunted world in which faith and honor have yet to lose their currents. So, I've read a few of his books. Um, 
there are classics and you know it is always good uh, there are a reason they're classics and that's because they're so talented and have withstood the test of time and are indicative of different eras that um, we could be part of. It's like a glimpse into the past. So I always try to uh, read and reread some of the classics, just the perspective. And I have a hard time finding new authors who are as talented as some of the classics. I feel like. They're just few and far between, and perhaps some of the classic authors were also, but it was over a span, you know, of hundreds of years that some of these authors emerged. Maybe people then thought the same thing, but I don't know, I just feel like the writing is just better quality, and there's so many authors now, and, and some of the stories are very entertaining, like I love Janet Ivanovich, and she is a good author, but it's, you know, it's not the same. Do you guys feel me? Okay. And speaking of Janet Ivanovich, Mystery 7 Up. Uh, you probably, if you're hooked on her series, will read this one first. And then you're going to be wanting number 8. Like, immediately. <laughs> If you get through your other books and save this for last, then maybe by the time it's time to return them, uh, you'll be ready for novel eight. And you can always request to put a hold on it and have someone come pick it up for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep, Stephanie Plum is, Plum is a bounty hunter for her cousin. She is not a very good bounty hunter. Uh, and as a woman, she has a difficulty um, bringing in some of her failure to appears who are bigger and stronger than she is but she has her ways and through luck and um, motivation she she gets it done and it's uh, it's entertaining and her character is endearing because you know because of her struggles and her admittance to, you know, being afraid of using a gun and um, eating cake when she's distressed and all these things that uh, that I find in endearing and so, yeah, I really love the series and I recommend it for people that like mystery or for any girls out there looking for a good uh, chick book. It's, um, it's really good. You are all set. I'm just going to slide this through. Make sure those are all loaded onto your account. And here is your card. So they're due back in three weeks. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to contact me. The telephone number is on the back of this. Also, no, it's not. Okay, well, on the branch sheet that I gave you, um, the different telephone numbers or the different branches are located on there, so uh, any librarian would be happy to help you call and explain your situation. Absolutely. Well, good luck with everything. I hope it goes well, and it was nice to, to see you again, and um, enjoy all the many books you have to read. Thanks. You too.